my reaction is the same as when I see someone smoking a cigarette. Um, uh, it's a conscious choice that an individual has made. Uh, I, 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 I think it's an unwise choice based on our scientific knowledge, but that's, in my opinion, the individual's choice. The problem with uh, mobile phones, however, is that um, unlike cigarettes where the information that they cause cancer is now clear, the mobile phone companies have done, in my opinion, a great disservice by hiding the fact that the signal can lead to disease. Um, uh, when you look back at the cigarette companies, they didn't willingly disclose the fact that their product causes cancer. And I think the mobile phone companies are making exactly the same mistake today. It's been a hell of a ride. Um, uh, uh, when I was a, a very young student I made uh, in graduate school, I made some experiments. And uh, uh, I first observed what I thought were effects due to electrical fields. And I, I, I was challenged uh, uh, by people who, who, who denied the reality of the observations. They said that I was a poor scientist and I had done things incorrectly. And uh, at that point, I found out something about myself. Um, um, uh, I, I was just not someone who was going to uh, accept an authoritative statement that something was a certain way without being shown why I should accept that view and, and give up my view. So um, I, learned, um, uh, I learned that I'm the sort of a person uh, who, will, uh, who will pursue what I think to be the truth. And along the way, uh, I acquired all of the skills that I need to do that. Um, it's very difficult to defend a point of view which I think now is, is, is orthodox. But when I first advanced it 35 years ago, it was quite far from orthodox. Um, so in order to stay uh, alive, I mean, I was swimming around in the sea, and there were barracuda in that sea, and they had big, sharp teeth. Um, and in order to stay alive, I had to develop certain skills. It's the reason I went to law school. Um, so I have all of the skills that I need in order not to be eaten so I can survive to do the experiments to test the idea that I had regarding whether I was right or not about fields. So in answer to your question, the best thing that I learned was that, uh, that I'm not afraid uh, uh, to stand up and fight. And I was really happy um, to find that out about myself. Uh, I'm not a coward. Science, for example, uh, uh, the uh, question of um, health risks due to mobile phone fields um, uh, is, 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 like, is like anything else in this world. Um, uh, 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 what gets done uh, is what gets paid for. Uh, scientists require money to work. Uh, the people who have money to pay for research today 99 times out of 100 are the cell telephone companies, that industry. So the work that gets done um, tends to be work um, that is controlled uh, uh, by the scientists whom they control. Uh, so uh, today you have in the world um, uh, uh, two classes of scientists. You have scientists who are essentially working, either directly or indirectly, for the industry. And then you have another group of scientists who manage to get money from some source other than the industry. Now, uh, if you ask this group of scientists, uh, are mobile phones a health hazard? The answer will be unequivocally, uh, definitely no. If you ask this group of scientists, you will get a range of answers. At one end will be, yes, clearly so. And at the other end will be, we're not sure, but we deeply suspect there's a problem and we need more honest money for research. So two groups, this group and that group, yin and yang, male and female, completely different groups of scientists, depending on whether they are compromised and whether they can give you independent opinions or are not compromised. That's the nature of science today in this field. Uh, in, in the 60s and 70s, um, 
uh, th there were two sciences. Um, one was called biology and one was called physics. Uh, chemistry was sort of a in-between, more like physics, and it had practical applications. Uh, but in terms of two fundamental sciences, you had physics and biology. Now, um, anything having to do with electrical energy, anything having to do with electrical energy belonged with the physicists. Uh, the biologists wanted nothing whatsoever to do with electrical energy. Even today, you can, you can look uh, at the curriculum of the most prestigious universities in the world who offer degrees in biology, the various subspecies of biology. You look at the courses they take, and they take no physics. It's just not there. Well, the laws governing electricity, do you see, are in physics. So if you don't study physics, you can't do biology and incorporate electricity. Okay. However, you can, if you know about physics, you can do experiments. You may not know a damn thing about biological systems, so you make egregious mistakes in how you handle them, but you can formally do the experiments because you know how to make the electrical signals. You know, <clears throat> you know how to control them. You know how to measure them. So um, th there is this gap that developed between people who come from a physical science background, physicists and engineers, and people who come from a biological background. That, ex that, that gap still exists today, but less so. You now have people who or are in biology who know enough about physics and mathematics to do sensible experiments. Thirty years ago, that did not exist. Uh, so you only had one perspective, which was the perspective of the physicists. And when physicists write their equation, there's nothing in their equations that says, oh, electrical energy is going to harm people. It's just not in the equations. Therefore, they denied it existed. And I could give you a list of eight physicists who have won Nobel Prizes who have made exactly these kinds of claims as late as 1995. A very hard-headed, cold, calculating, and ignorant view about the way the world works. But there's nothing to say that there aren't physicists who are cold and ignorant. They know the equations, but they're still ignorant. That whole dichotomy has, has uh, has lessened over the years. It's not as bad as it was. In 1973, 1974, it was strident. It was strong. So there was great, great opposition uh, to the ideas that I'm expressing now. Now, the idea comes only from the people who work for the industry. It doesn't come from hardly anybody within this group of biologists who are not funded by corporate sources. Big change.